I'm gonna talk about people nobody likes. And by nobody, I mean some people. Cause everybody don't like the same things. Or dislike the same things. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. Today we are talking about a confusing topic. Uh, <laughs> I want to do the Top 5 Unpopular Opinions About Un- popular authors. So basically what I'm trying to say is I am going to talk about authors that I either like personally or I like their work um, that other people don't seem to care too much for mainly because they're jerks. Um, so I, this is a this is a very close and personal uh, subject to me, topic to me. Um, I have I've long been seen as a bully because of, uh, I guess, my honest reviews. Sometimes my reviews are not parody, but they're satire. Uh, so there's a lot of language, you know, there's a lot of jokes in there. And people take offense to that stuff, and I can dig it. But uh, I wanted to talk about top five authors that get a bad rap just for being who they are. Uh, I will warn you that uh, at least one of these authors I have not read. Well, not in not any of his novels, but we'll get into it. And oddly enough, um, I just realized they're all dudes. So maybe that has something to do with it also. Uh, first off, we're going to talk about John Green. Anytime you reach a certain level of celebrity, you're going to have a, a massive, uh, you know, just people that want to see you fail. People that want to see you collapse. Uh, John Green is, was a YouTuber, is a YouTuber. Um, he's also a terrific author. Um, he's one of the only, there's probably three, a total of three YA authors that I will read. Um, and he's one of them. Uh, I I loved I've loved everything I've read from him. I haven't read Turtles all the way down yet, but I'm looking forward to that one. I every time I bring him up, I get oh I can't stand that guy. Well, why can't you stand that guy? What's wrong with him? Oh, he plays on people's emotions. I, isn't that what we're supposed to do? I mean, this books. It's it, it, yes, it's entertainment, but I mean some of the best. Some of the best creative works, period, play on your emotions. If you're if you're crying, you're supposed to be crying. Is it manipulative? Yeah, that's what an author's supposed to do: manipulate your feelings. At least that's how I feel. Next up is <laughs> whew, Charles Bukowski. Yeah, um, this dude's something else. I read Ham and Rye uh, well after I found out that he was a, a womanizer, a drunk, uh, you know, an addict, all that stuff. Uh, other than the womanizing, I, I I relate pretty hard to this dude as far as, you know, what he put his body through while he was alive. He didn't give any shits whatsoever about what he said and what he did. Um, he did have a really garbage opinion about women, um, but I enjoy his fiction. I don't enjoy his poetry. I have one of his collections, something about uh, love is a dog from hell, <laughs> which has some of the weirdest poetry I've ever read. Um, very dude poetry, um, talking about uh, dicks, erections, uh, semen, all that stuff. But this, I loved this book, um, and I, I really don't have any idea why. It's kind of like Nelson DeMille. I have no idea why I enjoy his stuff. Um, I would have put him on here, but <laughs> nobody ever talks about him. Um, the, uh, the issue that, of course, you get, especially from, uh, from women, they get upset, you know, because seeing a man reading this, the man must think the same way as he does, um, which is not the case. Uh, sometimes we just like the fictional worlds these jackasses create, and that's where I will go as far as agreeing with people who like H.P. Lovecraft. Um, you can enjoy the dude's mythos or whatever you want to call it. His, even his writing. Love his writing all you want. Just don't celebrate the dude himself. That's all I'm saying. I don't like Charles Bukowski, but hell... He's a fantastic writer. Um, I'm going to leave this one for, for last because we, we're going to talk uh, very in-depth with that one. All right, next up we have Jonathan Franzen. <laughs> I'm giggling just, just saying this. So, uh, people hate Jonathan Franzen. Uh, I love him. Uh, I've never read him. This is the one that I have not read. Uh, I love the guy to death just the way that he carries himself, the way he talks. Um, the... <laughs> The, the way 
the way he gives absolutely no fucks, especially like uh, telling uh, Oprah that, you know, it's like Michael Crichton's a shit writer. I'm a better writer than him. And from what I've read of his essays, he is. Um, and he's got some really sound writing advice that people just completely ignore. And, I mean, like one of the things that I remember uh, his uh, be his top ten writing tips popped up again. Um, BuzzFeed or some crap like that, some writing website or something. It popped up again and everybody lost their nut again over it because one of them is nobody with an internet connection is writing good fiction. Yeah, because they're on the internet. It's it's pretty it's it's that simple. Nobody nobody who is surfing the internet is writing good fiction because they're not writing good fiction. It's literal. <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff on that. There's there's a couple of things that he points out in there that's just that's just funny just on a satire side. Um and some of his essays and short works that I have read definitely you know, lean more toward the sat satirical side. He has a very dry humor, very British in that aspect, from what I can gather. But, uh, of course, people don't like him mainly because, you know, when he was on tour for the Corrections, uh, which was a massive success, uh, he, he had a lot of very, very, very poor opinions in people's eyes, and he gets a bad rap. Um, I plan on reading his novel some, at some point in time this year. But uh, if you don't like Jonathan Franz, and I'd love to hear why you don't like him down there in the comments below. With uh, Same with all these characters. We're going to get into more of that at the end. Uh, next up, we have another asshole, John Irving. Now, I'm trying to do a reread, uh, not a reread, a read-through of his catalog. I'm currently stuck, installed on uh, Widow for one year. Sorry, Cody. My buddy Cody Tidwell keeps on trying to tell me <laughs> that I need to finish it. I can't get past like the first 50 to 100 pages. I can't remember exactly how long. But I'll eventually get through all of his stuff. Even if I have to audiobook it through A Widow from One Year. But uh, this guy is full of himself. Uh, he is, he's an utter jackass. You can just watch his, uh, you can watch his, uh, his interviews and you can tell, you know, how highly he thinks of himself. Um, and he, he really thinks highly of the way he writes. He's always bragging about how, you know, he, he writes backwards. Um, all these different, these different things. He writes longhand. Um, I'm, I'm talking, he writes 800 page novels longhand. So, like, the manuscript's got to be, you know, 2,000 pages long, longhand. Um, but he, he, he's very, he, he's one of those affluent white men who just think that their shit don't stink. Um, and it's amazing because for him to act the way he does and write the deep characters and tackle the deep commentary, the social aspect and, you know, gender and all that stuff that he tackles, you wouldn't think a, a person that seems so narcissistic could have that deep uh, 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 idea of empathy, you know? Um, where So while he may act that way, that might just be a public persona that he's he, that he is putting on because controversy does sell books. Finally, we're getting into uh, an author that I just recently fell in love with last year. Me and my wife read uh, Infinite Jest last year, and we both enjoyed it. Um, I think I might have enjoyed it more than she, but only because of the writing, because I'm a writer. Um, but she did. I read this to her over the course of like I think a year, almost a year, something like that. At least nine months. Um, I read this to her every night, and we went back and forth, we did all the end notes, we did everything, and, and we dug it. In fact, there's a video on the channel called The Smartening. I don't know if we'll ever do another episode, um, but if you want to watch that, uh, it's based on this book. So yeah, David Foster Wallace. Um, this is, the, there's a running joke with David Foster Wallace that, <laughs> that goes, um, he is the author that everyone has on their, sh that all straight white men have on their shelves that none of them have read. Um, I, I think that's funny. Uh, that perception. Now, reading the book, I understand where that's coming from. It is def definitely has its dude bro moments. Uh, but the intelligence level of this book is well beyond a dude bro mentality. Uh, I had an absolutely amazing time with this. And every single time I stop and think about Infinite Jest, I want to go back and read the book all over again. And supposedly it's it was written to have to make an addict out of the audience, to make out of the reader. 
it makes you want to as soon as you quit as soon as you finish the book it makes you want to start all over again and I have an addictive personality so it worked on me yay um, but yeah David Foster Wallace gets a lot of hate um, and I mean for a guy that kills killed himself he's still getting a whole hell of a lot of hate I mean hell do you blame the guy for what he did I and mean, all the shit that he got the shit that he's still getting and he ain't even here anymore um, but oh, <coughs> dust <coughs> I'm sorry I pulled that one off the bottom shelf and it's sitting there since <laughs> last year. Do you have unpopular opinions about unpopular authors? Again, I know that's kind of confusing, but that means that you have good opinions about authors that people can't stand. They don't have to be um, authors that nobody's heard about, that, that kind of thing, but they can be popular authors, as in they sell well. Uh, what I want to know is, is whether or not you constantly hear you know, that they're crap people or whatever. doesn't even necessarily have to be their writing life. It can be just that everybody says that they're a bad writer, like uh, like Dan Brown or James Patterson or whatever. Um, do you have a positive opinion of those authors? Let me know down there in the comments below. I'm going to try and do a... Uh, I was going to put up tweets and everything in this video, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, uh, a viewer or commenters edition of this and I'm going to put it all together uh, and have your guys's another top five with your opinions. So until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye! That was a lot of talking. Like my jaw hurts. I don't even know how long that, that, that is. That, 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 <laughs> that all folks.